It's your girl Ro in the building and I'm here to welcome you to my YouTube. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how to make the sweet potato cheesecake brownies. These are amazing. So I'm going to share with you how to make them. First off, you want to get three medium to large sweet potatoes. You want to make sure that they are good sweet potatoes. Just check them out. Then you want to clean them. Clean them thoroughly, make sure there's no dirt or anything around them, and dry them off completely. Next, you want to take your fork and begin to poke holes in your sweet potatoes going all the way around. You want to do this technique with each sweet potato. This helps with the baking process. It helps cook all the way through. And you also want to take some aluminum foil and wrap them really tightly. Now you don't have to do this technique, but I do. It just helps lock in the steam and helps bake your sweet potato all the way through. Now you wanna take them and place them in a pan or line them up on a cookie sheet. Then you wanna bake them at 350 degrees for an hour and 15 minutes. Once they are done, you wanna carefully remove them and carefully open them using a fork poking all the way through just to make sure they have baked all the way through. If not, just put them back in the oven for about 15, 20 minutes to let them bake thoroughly. Now you want to cut them. These are extremely hot, so do this while they're hot, but cut off your ends and do it carefully. I'm cutting both ends and then I'm going to cut down the middle and begin to peel off the skin so that I'm not digging too much into the sweet potato because that's what you want. Now, again, I mentioned I like to bake my sweet potatoes because it gives off more, more flavor. But if you choose to boil them, that is your choice. I love flavor, so I bake my sweet potatoes. So try it out. So using a spoon, you want to scoop out your sweet potatoes and apply them to a bowl. You wanna carefully scoop out your sweet potatoes that you don't scrape the bottom because there's still skin at the bottom of that aluminum foil. So make sure you're only scraping out the sweet potatoes because you don't want no skin in your sweet potatoes. All right, this is your sweet potato mash and this is how it should look. And then the next step, we are going to start to mix and blend our sweet potatoes. So using a hand mixer, you can do, but I recommend a stand mixer if you have one. But when you're using the hand mixer, you're gonna have to mix this for quite some time because you wanna make sure you get out these strings. It's important that you get out these strings because I hate a sweet potato, anything, and it got this in it. So this is what you're looking for and this is what you want to remove. So I'm gonna use my stand mixer and I applied the sweet potatoes, all of them, into my bowl and I'm gonna use a whisk attachment. This will help get and collect those strings. So you want to do this on medium high so I just let it go and I mix it at least five or six times so that I am sure that I'm removing as much strings from my sweet potatoes. And you're gonna see me do that right here. So what I'm gonna do here is remove my whisk attachment, knock off majority of those sweet potatoes. And here is those strings. You want to remove that, throw it out. And I've scraped my bowl a bit, just, you know, mixing it around. But I mentioned I do this five or six times. Well, each time I mix for two minutes, I stop, remove the attachment, get off those strings, and then do the process again so that I'm sure that I'm getting all those, majority of those strings out or as much out as possible. And you'll see the change. And that's what I'm doing here, repeating the process, what's left on them attachments, throw it out, clean it off, and then repeat the process, all right? 
And again, I did mention five or six times. I said that a few times now, so y'all should know. All right, so once you have gone through that process, it should look like this, nice and smooth, not lumpy, okay? You wanna make sure you remove them strains because I don't like no strains in my taters, okay? And you shouldn't want no strains in your taters either. All right, so I'm gonna remove it from my mixing bowl, adding it to another bowl, and then you're just going to set this aside and we're gonna move on to the next step. So in a bowl, I'm gonna add two and a half cups of sugar, two and a half sticks of unsalted butter, three eggs, and you want to mix. Mix this until it's well incorporated. So after that process is done, it should come out looking like this. And now we're gonna move on to the next ingredients. We're gonna add in two teaspoons of cooking up flavor, a half teaspoon of lemon extract, one and a half teaspoon of butter vanilla, then we got three teaspoons of lemon juice. Now we're gonna add in our spices. We got some cinnamon, salt, nutmeg, allspice, and all that's going in there and everything nice. Recipe will be listed in the description box below, so make sure y'all check that out. But you're gonna mix this until it's well incorporated. It will turn, to colors are gonna change dark in color, so don't be alarmed, but mix this well. Once this is done, now scrape your bowl. Make sure you ain't got nothing sticking at the bottom. And we're gonna add in one cup of all-purpose flour. You wanna add this a little bit at a time so it doesn't clump up, but you wanna add just as you see here and mix until everything is incorporated. So now you wanna bring in your sweet potato mash and you wanna add in a total of three cups. But I'm gonna add in two cups first so that you can see how this turns out. Now, I did have a lot of people tell me that they did the recipe and they didn't get the color that they desired, but I'm going to show you here, so just please pay attention. So, um, you can choose to use just the sweet potatoes or you can add food coloring. But I'm just going to show you how it turns out when you're just doing the sweet potato. So I'm adding two cups here. We're gonna put this extra over to the side and then you're just going to mix until all the sweet potatoes are incorporated. So this is what it looks like after the two cups of sweet potato mash. And then I'm gonna add in the third cup of the sweet potato mash and then you want to mix this until it's well combined. Now, once you do this recipe, you're gonna see when you get to this step, your batter is going to look light in color. So don't worry, you can add full coloring and adding these many drops will get your desired color. If you wanna add more, that's up to you, but you don't want it to be too orange. So I'm using an orange food coloring and I'm applying 10 to 15 drops for this particular recipe. Here is brighter in color as you see here and this is the finished look for my sweet potato mix. All right? Now you just wanna take this, set it to the side and we're gonna move on to the cream cheese. Using two eight ounce blocks of cream cheese softened. Make sure all your ingredients at room temperature too. You want to mix this for four minutes using the whisk attachment. So when your four minutes is up, it's going to come out looking like this. It's going to appear to be thicker. You want to take your spatula and make sure you scrape the sides and the bottom. Then you're going to add your next ingredients. Half cup of granulated sugar. Mix it for two minutes. When that is up, then you're gonna add in your sour cream and you wanna add one third cup of sour cream, 
Then you want to add in your eggs, two large eggs, and you want to add them one at a time. And remember, make sure your ingredients are at room temperature. Adding in the last egg and just letting that go until it's nice and smooth. Then you want to add in your flavor. I'm adding in a tablespoon of cooking nip flavor. You can use vanilla extract if you don't have the cooking nip flavor. Once that's done, it should be nice, silky, and smooth. Scrape your sides, but I like a smooth cream cheese filling, cream cheese mix. When you do scrape the sky, just give it a little mix one for a few minutes. And here you have the finished cream cheese. So now let's put everything together. I'm using a nine by 13 inch pan. I'm spraying the pan, but I'm going to apply parchment paper just for easy release. All right. Now I'm going to cut um, my parchment paper and I'm going to start off cutting just this bottom side here so you can see how it's going to be cut. But you want to fold it as I'm doing here and cut this all just halfway so that your parchment paper can fold into your pan easily in the corners. And just fold those corners down and it'll be a perfect fit. And I'm gonna spray the inside of my parchment paper. You don't have to do so because it's a nonstick uh, parchment paper. So, um, and don't use wax paper, parchment paper. All right, so now I got the pie shells and you just want to place those in. And as you see, I'm going to place them. It's gonna have some overage, but you're gonna take a knife and you're going to cut them evenly to line up the bottom of your pan. Now save these pieces because you are going to use them and you're gonna see that in the next clip. So now you wanna take those same pieces that you cut off and just line them up along your pan, around right along these edges that you see here, and just press them down so they can go right into the crust. And you're gonna do the same for the other side. And I'm using all of this pie crust. It's two pie crust to a box, so that will fit into this nine by 13 inch pan. So cutting off these extra, cause you don't want them on the side, cause you wanna see your cream cheese and your sweet potatoes on the side when you cut them. So be sure to use all of this um, pie crust. It's not gonna hurt. Just line it up in the pan, press it down, and then you'll be ready to add your filling and it's gonna bake well. Now, after you add in your last extra strip, applying it to the bottom of that pan, you just want to set it to the side and then you're going to get your cream cheese. And you're just going to sit like a cup or a half a cup of cream cheese to the side. And this will be your drizzle for the topping of your sweet potato brownies. Now you wanna grab your pan and take the remainder of that cream cheese and apply it to the top of this crust. And you wanna spread out your cream cheese evenly, make sure you get those corners. And once this is done, then you're going to put it in the freezer for about 15 to 20 minutes. Now, once the 15 to 20 minutes is up, remove it from your freezer and now apply your sweet potatoes. Make sure you spread it evenly across your pan, making sure you get those corners. And you wanna take your spatula and spread it out as neat as possible because this is going to be your finish. This is the finished top, okay? So just spread it 
out evenly so it can be nice and neat and presentable. You're gonna take that extra cream cheese that you had sitting to the side, put it in a piping bag and create these lines. This is going to be your final touch before it goes into the oven. All right, you wanna take a knife or a toothpick and just going along the top of the surface, not all the way to the bottom of your pan, but make this design and then you're going to be ready to bake. You want to tap your pan, all right? And then you're going to bake this at 350 degrees for 50 to 55 minutes, depending on your oven. You may have to cook it a little longer, but after it's done, it may crack a little bit. It's okay, um, but you know, you got to know your oven. So you're going to remove it using your parchment paper, removing it carefully. And then we're going to cut, all right? Make sure you cut your ends, all right? Get a good knife, cut your ends off first. You're gonna see me here. I got so excited, I started cutting my squares. But look at this, this looks good. But like I said, I started cutting my squares and I'm like, I didn't even cut all my sides. So <laughs> you're gonna see me cut a few of these but you wanna get a piece of paper towel, all right? And clean off your knife so that the sides of your squares are clean and presentable. And this is me cutting the sides off, but look at that. That's sweet goodness. Mm. Take that paper towel, clean off your knife um, when you're cutting these squares, because if not, you're gonna have crumbles on the side of your squares. So you want clean sides, Clean off that knife before you begin your next row or your next square. Now let's get a little close up action to this square and what I mean about cleaning that knife off so you can have some clean sides. So look at that. Sweet goodness. See Y'all see that? Comment down below if you like this clean cut, okay? So make sure you do that technique. Clean your knife off before you cut them squares so you don't have a bunch of crumble on the side of your sweet potato cheesecake brownies, all right? But if you're new here, welcome and thank you for joining. If you're coming back, hey y'all. And comment down below, let me know how you have enjoyed this video. And stay tuned for more videos and check out my channel for other videos that you see in my video list. Look at that bottom. Nice, toasty brown. All right. So, again, all supplies and links will be listed. Even the recipe will be listed in the description box below. If you have enjoyed this video, give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And you already know, it's your girl, Robot to Go. And I'll see you all in the next video.